novel, and that does everything that Microsoft Word ever does for me at work. Um, and certainly, I wouldn't even dream of uh, purchasing Microsoft Word, even if I was running a Windows system, because it just doesn't it doesn't offer anything. And I find Abbey Word is faster, it's more responsive, um, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And it goes the same with Linux compared to Windows. Um, again, it's, it well, costs me absolutely nothing, but it's a bonus because it's actually better than Windows for me. Uh, my computer experience is sorry, record. Yeah, no, sorry, I don't know why I interrupt, but the, the, the comparison, the way I see it is, if your code, if your inner workings are out in the public domain, so to speak, for people to examine and see how they work, they can't afford to be hacked, kludgy workarounds, uh, because it's out in public view for people to, to criticise on. Mm. Uh, if, it, if it's closed, all you see is the end result, so it doesn't really matter how it gets there. Um, and the thing is, with um, people use um, open source uh, code as their portfolio, as to, to show people what they do. If you're going for a job and you've you've contributed to a lot of different projects, you you can actually point them to that that code and say, look at my examples of my work. You can see how how my, I process different things, and that's how I write my code. And they 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 are judged on the on that. Um, rather than just the output, which could be, as I say, really kind of hacked around something that barely works under certain circumstances, uh, but they're, they're able to hide it because you're only releasing the binary. And even that, the, the license for the binary might not allow a potential employer to go and look at contributions of their work. So, yeah. And I think for anybody listening to this that maybe doesn't have, uh, hasn't considered an open source solution of something, the the lesson to be learned is give it a go. Um, I mean, I certainly and Roy and Gordon advocate freedom of choice, and that choice comes out of um, obviously researching the options open to you. Now, it may well be that the solutions that you have in your organisation are the best solutions for you, but until you have a look at what the alternatives are, you won't know for definite. And obviously, when the alternatives are free and you're not going to cost anything or put any financial risk as it were to um to try those solutions give it a go if at the end of the day you make your decisions having tried open source then then fine at least it's on the basis of an informed choice and i think we all promote choice as well as um you know the, the software that we speak about so give it a go and then so many solutions i mean certainly in the home and oh. I, I don't I don't want to harp on about this because it'll be the same as what every other Linux user and open source software user has found there is nothing that i want to do that i can't do um with my current rig. Um, there's nothing that I li- remember back to being a Windows user at home and think, oh, I wish I could do that. Um, that's my experience. And I'm sure I'm not unique in that. So, uh, sorry, Gordon. Well, no, I, I don't promote choice. All your bases shall belong to XFCE. That shall be the decree that this part. <laughs> oh, obviously, I'm, obviously, I'm kidding for the people who don't recognise humour. I, yeah, I am joking. Of course. Of course. <laughs> yeah, of, co- of course. Of course, we all advocate choice. That was just a long guy that I thought I'd throw in. But you know, I, I do. I think it's. I think it's very right. You know, when I say that, we wouldn't be sat here talking now, and put, and we and a lot of effort goes into making this audio cast and doing our respective uh, blogs and web pages, um, and we wouldn't bother doing that or putting in that effort. There's no financial reward for any of us. There's no. Um, there's no perk. There's no freebies here. We're not getting sent anything through the post. We're not getting paid to put this opinion. This is an honest held belief opinion that we do in our spare time, probably to the detriment of uh, many family duties. Um, just because we truly believe in, in open source software and the software that's that's out there that can give you a better alternative. So for anybody who hasn't looked at um, open source alternatives to what they're currently running, consider it now um, and have a look. It, there's no risk. And obviously, if you find a better solution, then great. Uh, and if you don't, no harm done. You've just lost a bit of your time. Um, sorry, Roy, we're cutting out that... the conversation. Yeah, I was going to say quickly here before we jump back in there. Um... I think that's where a lot of companies and a lot of um, CEOs and that just are baffled by the whole concept of free culture. It's like, why would you do something if you're not getting paid for it? And, I mean, if we don't get any financial rewards for uh, for, uh, for doing what we, what we do as far as uh, free software and open source and all that, but it's, the, the rewards are not only restricted to financial. If you help someone, if you if you have got one of your mates who's always getting plagued with viruses, and you end up introducing them to, to Linux and installing whatever distribution it is, and and getting them involved in that, um, then that's 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 
a win in a different way. It's not you get something and you you get rewarded for that, and and a, a sort of good feeling that you've helped someone. Um, you know, and I mean helping out. I mean I help out in the mint chat rooms uh, and people who do tutorials. I do screencasts. Um, when you draw attention to something, when you you, you draw attention to this new project, and you help them out, uh, give them a little bit of publicity. Um, because again, this could be, as I said earlier on, identicals um, with with the two guys that do that. Um, PS Squid, P Squid, even and Reality, and Identica. I mean, it's something that helps them, and they help other people. And you give something back, and you see that that knowledge you're passing on knowledge and skills. It's like t- it's, it's it's the old thing of um, you can sell a man a fish, and that gets him one meal. Or he can teach him to fish, and that lets him feed his family for life. So it's 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 not just financial. You do get rewarded for for doing different things, but it's not money, or quite often it's not money. It's, it's helping other people, you know. And and also, you know, to getting involved in open source or starting to use open source packet software doesn't mean scrubbing your system and starting off with the Linux uh, from day one. Obviously, if you run a Windows platform. Um, You've got the, you've got plenty of open source software available for that as well. And that's a good int- introduction to the whole world and the whole ethos or the whole, the scene of open source software to show you just what's on offer and how good it can be. Um, and it can be a gradual thing. It, it doesn't mean you have to throw all your eggs into one basket overnight. And, uh, and that's certainly a lot of, um, a lot of the time I've now con- moved about 50 people over to, uh, to Linux and that's been, a gradual progression. It started with uh, maybe using a few open source uh, packages on on Windows, and then they've said, "Well, hang on a minute, this isn't Microsoft, and it's actually better." Um, and they've seen that obviously it doesn't have to have the Microsoft name on it to work uh, or to to function. Um, and then they've obviously moved uh, moved on to to Linux, and it, it does. It, it's a nice way to to see to dip your feet in the water first. Um, and just very quickly going back to what you said earlier, Gordon, about the um, Installing Linux and introducing users. I find um, I go for the three-step process. And um, when you've got a user who's not uh, interested in technology or has no interest in computing as such, they just use it as a tool. Um, my first step with a, a, a would-be Linux user is to give them a live CD. So they'll spend a week or so just booting off the live CD, messing around with it, tinkering about. If they like it at that point, I then dual boot it. Um, so they've still got the option to move back to Windows um, if they want to uh, run some piece of software, just as a comforter, as it were, so that they don't feel completely alienated in the, in the, on a new system immediately. And then after a couple more weeks, they're still happy and find themselves booting Linux more often than they do Windows, which has been 99% of the cases that I've installed. Then they get a complete system wipe. We start again from scratch, and they get a they get the whole uh, their the whole Linux distribution uh, installed on there without any without any Windows, um, and that's how I work it, and it, it seems to work very well. And once people have got over the initial fear and the fud, and they've had years of this online and word of mouth that the only solution is Microsoft solution, and once they get over that, actually realise, and, and it's a bit of disbelief at first that something that doesn't say Microsoft on it can get them on the on the net and get them sending emails. Um, once they've got over that shock, as it were, then uh, they jump right in, and it's uh, it's no looking back. So, uh, so and sorry, Roy, we're cutting you completely out of this. So, is there anything else you wanted to add before we move on? Uh, probably a few topics which we could have covered before to do with Linux. One thing we uh, would like to hear about from readers is what topics and what focus they prefer for the show. Uh, I think uh, we do try to be quite broad in terms of the topics we cover. And we are quite similar in that sense to the scope of the IRC channels uh, that I have in uh, in TechRights. Um, but I know that some people I've heard from they prefer to have uh, a focus on on the same things we cover in in daily uh, in daily links in the site, um, and that means we we should try and go through uh, a group of topics uh, mostly to do with slash Linux and then free software uh, and copyrights and things like that being a sort of an aside. I know it's it's kind of it's kind of off topic for me to mention that, but I do think I do need to stress that we we do try to uh, deliver content that's going to be useful to listeners. And in order in order to ensure we stay online, we we need to get some feedback. 
on this uh, on the subject. I think all three of our sites um, are quite unique and go in different directions at different times. So it's very difficult to put all that together as to one sort of uh, cause on an audio cast.